Hi, my name is Woody, and just like almost every dude you probably know, I used to be in a band. Wait, let's back up. Since as long as I can remember, I love playing music and performing in front of people. Coffee houses, talent shows, neighbors' garages, grandparents' living rooms, it, it just didn't matter. I just loved being in front of people, playing songs that I loved. After several high school band names and lineups and graduating from college, I went 100% all in. A fellow musician that I had met a few years you know, into college, uh, but certainly before I graduated, a guy named Tyler Bentz, uh, and I reconnected after I graduated, and I basically called him up and said, hey man, let's, uh, let's get together, let's talk music, and you know, we discovered that we both really, really liked a lot of the same bands and stuff, and we just started writing songs just like crazy. He knew a couple guys that one guy played the bass, another guy played the drums. Back in his neck of the North Georgia woods, Chris, also known as Boo Boo Martin, who played bass, and Thomas Carter, who played the drums. And we formed our band, The Modern Society. This wasn't us playing cover songs and um, playing you know, beat up pizza joints and uh, coffee houses anymore. This is us actually doing it, making a go of it. This was our career. We were going all in. 100% practicing six if not seven days out of the week rehearsing and truthfully it was kind of a weird time in music I mean this was around the time that Napster was you know not just getting started but in its heyday so record labels didn't know what to do you know people weren't buying music anymore really and so we thought I mean can we even do this like how do you get signed when a label doesn't even know where it's headed. So we took matters into our own hands. We created a MySpace page. Do you remember MySpace? <laughs> and we just started self-producing music, putting the music out there, and kind of basically I would call up a venue in wherever, whatever, whatever town we wanted to play and pretend like I was our band's manager. I would call them up and say, hey, listen, you got to get these guys in your venue. They're made. They're coming into your town on January 15th, and they're either going to play your venue or they're going to play someone else's venue. And I'm telling you, these are the kind of guys that you're going to want to say one day, these guys played here first. And that worked. So we also released, self-released uh, our first album, and it also came out in Japan with a bonus track, and we were like, actually a pretty big deal in Japan. We did a ton of Japanese interviews. Um, which was interesting since we didn't have management, we couldn't. We had to like arrange the translators ourselves, and it was uh, it was pretty pretty interesting. But here's one of the magazines that I found with that Jap one of the Japanese interviews in it. So we would create our own tour schedules. We would just do southeastern tours uh, at first, and we started getting you know a little bit of following. Um, in fact, just off of MySpace, our first show ever was sold out, and it was it was insane. And then that turned into, you know, sold out shows in Atlanta. And then later, um, you know, probably our maybe 15th show ever, we were up in Milwaukee playing Summerfest, uh, which is one of the largest music festivals in the world. 
um, sharing the stage with Kings of Leon. Eventually, with our sort of guerrilla marketing techniques on MySpace, reaching out, and anytime we would go and play a town, let's say like Charlotte or whatever, we would just go on MySpace, search for people that lived in Charlotte, say, hey, listen, you know, take a, you know, listen to our music, tell us what you think. And we just started a conversation with these folks, became friends with them. They would come out to the shows, and that's kind of how we solidified our following throughout the Southeast and Midwest and Northeast and all of that. Finally, eventually we got enough attention from MySpace only that we landed a manager, we landed uh, a record deal. They flew us out to LA, we lived there for about two months. We recorded an album, living in an old beat up A9 Ford Econoline tour van that was no lie blue shag carpet floor to ceiling with three of your best friends is amazing but it's also like the worst dysfunctional marriage of all time right you've got all those personalities all of those egos and it's tough you know um the good news is we're all still friends <laughs> and uh, i always get asked always hey do you miss it and it's like um, of course I miss it. Of course I do. One of those things, you know, we did it, we had fun. That was our 20s and, you know, touring the country, having a good time, playing music and writing music. And, you know, it's never too late. You'll still hear some music from us. A lot more stories to come because, believe me, first I got to call these guys and get some permission on some of these stories. You know what I'm saying, boo-boo? And it was just uh, some of the best times of my life for sure.